Hey everybody, Larry Lawton here. I got another good video and it's a good review and it's been asked for a long time on the channel. This is the review of Con Air. But before I get started, please, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, please do. Please pass it around. Check us out on Instagram. Subscribe there. We're trying to build that up. TikTok. Twitter. We're trying to get it all going, guys. Uh, so please do that. Would appreciate it much. Also, please check us out on Discord and our member programs and Patreon programs. You know, we're, we're trying to hit all these things because we like to give a lot of stuff to a bunch of people and various groups and it's getting better and better. So uh, let me jump into this movie. You know, the movie brought back a lot of memories of Con Air, you know. I was on Con Air over 16 times, let me go by that. So, stuff on that plane was such bullshit, and uh, obviously it's a movie. Uh, I did not know this when I did some research. The movie grossed $225 million. Cost $75 million to make, so it's a box office success. Obviously, I like Nicolas Cage. Uh, I, yeah, I think the biggest thing on Nicolas Cage to me was the long hair. Uh, it just, it was weird for me. Close door number one. This one's done it all. Kidnapping, robbery, murder, extortion. Foxtrot, Charlie, and perimeter is secure. You are clear to release. His name is Cyrus Grissom, a.k.a. Cyrus the Virus. 39 years old, 25 of them spent in our institution. When they're transporting people, now, on the real con air, Real Con Air. They have it where uh, they'll have women on the plane, men on the plane, low security, camp inmates, or even, uh, and then maximum security going to Supermax. Maybe going to a, uh, a different area to be picked up uh, to go to Florence, Colorado, or different penitentiaries. And they're in black boxes, like I was in a black box. And a black box is a device that, here's your handcuffs. And then it goes over your handcuffs and they put another lock. I mean, you can't even do this. Like with a pair of handcuffs, you can go like this, you can move your hand, something like that. When you're in a black box, you can't, I mean, it is torture. Uh, you have marks on you, it's unbelievable. They call it the black box. Say there was a disturbance, but everything's under control. Say it, or I will kill you. They will never have the plane where you can get to the uh, a pilot. Not even close. They're, they're never going to have it where they're not watching you like they are. They don't put you in a cage. There's no cage in the back. You know, like that. There's, it, it seats. In fact, they take out the bathrooms. They have a toilet there. They'll have a toilet. And they'll have a, uh, uh, what do you call it? Like a... Uh, like a curtain. And they don't even give a shit about that. Uh, you can't shit on those planes. They're never going to take those cuffs off. You have legs, your leg irons, your belly chain. And what people don't understand in those things is when you go on those planes, you are strip searched. When you go for a transport in, in the federal system, you are strip searched. Totally. Taken out by... Listen, you're not only strip searched by the prison. You're strip searched by the guys, the marshals. Literally. Whole thing. Boom, lift the nuts, turn around, spread your ass, make sure they check your mouth, ah, 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 all that kind of stuff. They do all of that. They make, they're make they making sure that, that you don't have anything on you. Now, can you steal some? Can you get stuff in there? Absolutely. You know, I talk about suitcasing all the time. You know, uh, people have hide handcuff keys. Uh, there's different ways to regurgitate stuff up. They're, they're, listen, where there's a will, there's a way. But at this level on the movie, it was kind of funny because they would never let that happen the way it happened. Uh, they're not watching. You know, listen, you can't talk on those planes. See? It's not like, you know, hey, well, you know, what's going on, buddies? You know, let's do this or this. No, 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 no. You, you, you sit on that plane and you are in handcuffs and stuff and you, you don't even fucking move. And when they give you a bag lunch, literally a bag lunch, you know, you're lucky if you can just go like this eat it like this, literally, you know, you're trying to eat it like that, it's that fucked up. 
Hey, Larkin, who's that guy? That is Cameron Poe, a parolee hitching a ride home. He's a nobody. They had this guy going home on a parole. He was going, he, he's, he got paroled. He's not getting on a plane. They're gonna get a, if you're paroled already, what the frick? They wanna waste a spot on that plane for you when you already got parole. I mean, it makes zero sense. That made zero sense. You know, Nicolas Cage's character got parole, and now he's on with these. He's on, I love the actors, Danny Trejo. Danny Trejo is just a great actor. He plays a, a great black guy. But let me tell you something about Danny Trejo. Danny Trejo is the real deal. Danny Trejo did years in 10, 10 years in prison as well. Danny Trejo is the real deal. So he knows this shit. I mean, he's a great actor too. And he looks the part. He plays, you know, the, the gang member, you know, he, that tough gang member. And he, he's a tough guy, Danny Trejo. He's a fighter too, he's a boxer. U.S. Marshal Service annually flies 155,000 prisoners around the country for transfers, legal hearings, and medical exams. As you know, today's flight is a special one. We're populating Alabama's Felton Penitentiary, the newest supermax facility in the system. This place was designed to warehouse the worst of the worst. Now, first of all, let me tell you, Con Air was made in 1997. I was in. I was on Con Air in 1997. So uh, I was on that, that transport. Now let me tell you how they do that. They have multiple planes. And they, they literally, the hub for the federal, tra federal inmate transportation is out of Oklahoma City. And they literally have a prison at the airport. Literally at the airport. Like, like, like you go to Kennedy Airport or you know, one of the major airlines where the plane pulls up and the thing comes out, you know, you get off, none of this stash shit. They have that in Oklahoma. The plane pulls up, you come out, you go out into the, into the prison. And then it's a big building at the end of the, uh, I don't know where on the property of Oklahoma. And you're, going, and you're in Oklahoma City and it's like, a, I think, I don't know, a 12-story building or some crazy shit. And it has all floors on it with, with, with units, with prison cells and everything. And, so, and then they have processing on certain level, medical on certain level, and all that kind of stuff. And I've been there a lot, too. So before even that, they had a place called El Reno. But anyway, in the, I don't know, it's the late, I think that the, that was in the late 90s that came online called uh, Oklahoma City. The, the, it's called FTC, Federal Transportation Center, Oklahoma City. And that's all it is, is where they shuffle inmates all around the United States. And that's because it's centrally located. So they have West Coast flings, they have right coast shots, and they have multiple planes, big planes, and these planes are huge. Uh, they're like, uh, I don't know what, a 727s or 7 whatever, 37s, and they're modified. Now, they don't have that shit you see, you know, when they lock people's feet up. They don't have that. You see that in various movies. They don't have that, you know, that, that's all bullshit. Uh, they, now I've never seen it, unless it's one of the planes that I've never been on, and I doubt that very seriously. Uh, they have the smaller jets and stuff that they'll, they'll get very, very high profile. People can't be around anybody. But even those guys I've seen on the federal air marshals. Now, they're the real deal, those kind of When you get on and off that plane, they surround that plane with, with, with air marshals, with freaking guns shotguns and, and whatever, and you try to bolt or run, they'll fucking shoot you so quick your head is stand out. I mean, they ain't all like, freeze, they just shoot you. They don't give a shit, he ran, he's feuding. And then the buses come to the prisons, you know, up to the plane, but they don't come up to the plane, it's like a perimeter. Then you get, you know, when you come off that plane, they'll say, Lawton 5224004, or they just start reading numbers. 5224004, you get up, you shuffle on down, and the Getting on and off the plane at the airport is through the front, like that thing. But when you go to these airports all around the country, like Atlanta and wherever they are, the back of the plane opens up. And then you walk down the stairs, and that's where you do Lawton 5224004. And you go to, you know, you go, and, and a guy will point, look at you, pat you down again, then you go to a bus. And they'll go, that bus, that bus. Now, each bus might be going to a different facility at that area. Like when I was in Atlanta, you might have one bus that's going to Atlanta. Most of those buses go to Atlanta because there's another hold over there. But if you, have a, uh, if you get dropped in Jacksonville, you could go to Jacksonville, Florida, and when, that, when you get off that plane there, 
you, you might be going to the holdover, there's a Tallahassee holdover, or you can go actually to Georgia. The literal, they can go both ways. Now, when you go to Coleman, Florida, you know, when you get off, because back then they didn't have an airport at Coleman, I don't think they even do today. You, we, they used to fly you into Jacksonville, and then you'd take a bus down to Coleman. So you'd have a bus to Coleman, you'd have a bus to uh, uh, Tallahassee holdover, you have a bus to Georgia. You know, Jessup, Georgia, which is, is a lot closer to, to, to Jacksonville than it is from Atlanta. A lot of people don't know that, too. You know, they think, oh, you know, why, why not just go from Atlanta there is a longer ride than it is from Jacksonville to uh, uh, Brunswick or Jessup, Georgia. So that's where they would do it. And then you go it all over and they're taking you to different prisons. You might be going to county jails because uh, maybe this court, stuff like that. Like in, in, in Pennsylvania... You know, you could go up to, uh, what was that, that airport near Lewisburg. There was one Scranton or wherever the hell it was. is a little airport. And I say little. I mean, you only see them from what you see. and uh, But you're not in, like, where there's a hub of a zillion planes and all that. No, you're in the middle of nowhere at that airport. Well, anyway, in this movie, the plot is Nicolas Cage's guy gets out of prison. He's, he's parole, and so he's going somewhere. And he gets involved in this takeover of a plane uh, that they're going to do. And then he's got to be the hero and all that. Which, he, listen, he plays the great part. The plot is good. Uh, the way they do it. And then they have to land. But here's another thing. Like, you don't think for one second that the minute something happens on that plane, the ground isn't knowing about it? Are you kidding me? If, you know, they will divert a plane to whatever, for hospitals or whatever, and do what they have to do. Uh, but I can tell you one thing. There's one, there's no way that the, the, the captain of that plane is not secured in that cockpit and won't open that door and that steel door. They had those before they even made that federal law after, they, after uh, nine, uh, 2001, after the, you know, uh, when they took over the, the planes and for 9-11. Uh, no way they're going to do that. that. There isn't a chance in Shinola they're going to do something like that uh, without, you know, having it. They had those doors secured and everybody else, and that pilot's up there, and he's in communications with the ground. He's in communication with the head guys in the back of the plane. So there's no way you could just take over that plane like that and, and that nobody know about it on the ground immediately. Then, I love it. First of all, what they would do in real life is they would scramble jets so quick your head would spin. And those jets would be ready to shoot that plane down, whatever they got to do. I'm, tr I'm sure, I don't know how they work their, their law, but to be on that plane, you think they're going to let that plane be taken out with all these inmates to go wherever, and whether they're murderers or not? That's not going to happen. So, the, the, you know, again, a lot of people come to me, oh, man, he was great, Tommy Lee Jones. I said, Tommy Lee Jones was in, I think the movie was Marshalls or something like that, where a Con Air plane crashes and they go to the scene. Now, that always freaked me out when I watched that one because, you know, I always used to wonder what would happen if this plane crashed. Oh, we're dead. Inmates are fucking dead. You, what do you think? They, you know, you, you can't even grab an oxygen mask. You know, you think they're going to give a shit about you on that plane? Hell no. Those monsters are caring about one thing, themselves. Well, in this movie, they not only land, they land at a, uh, a like an abandoned airfield or whatever the hell that was. And what do they find there? A plane, they find a plane that's got ammunition and stuff, so that, you know, when these people do come, uh, to, you know, to get to ambush them and all that kind of crap and... and Obviously, it's got a great special effects. Uh, made a lot of money. I mean, the reviews are, great, uh, are, are, are somewhat. I, I love reading reviews before I do a review movie because I know you guys know that I look at movies differently. When I review movies, whether it's a prison show or a robbery show, I'm looking at it from the eyes of a ex-con who been on that plane, or a jewelry robber who robbed things, or a prisoner who is abused or something in the prison. I'm looking at it from a different point of view. I'm not looking at it from a guy who's never been there or been on it. So it's so weird for me to look and say, that's not right, that's not right, that's not right. And I have to stop myself. Because if I do that all the time, then if I'm like, wait a minute, I gotta I got enjoy the movie for what it is. 
and it's just so hard for me because I love movies. I think I told you guys that. I love TV shows and movies. And when I look at it, I got to, it's so hard. It's, I, I almost can't do it. And I see so much that one, oh man, that wouldn't go. You couldn't open the cuffs like that. It's not that easy. Or it is, or they could have did it this way, and they would have known better, and how it's stuff. And you know, I often wonder when I see Danny Trejo in a movie, if he thinks like me. Uh, if he thinks like, you know, because he knows prison, he knows the hole, he knows jail, you know. Danny's a fighter, he knows all this, kind of a lot like I am, and uh, he's older than I am. But I often wonder... If he like, I just think this this wouldn't go, or he's just past that point, just says, "Ah, oh, fuck it, I just go along with the movie," and I'm sure he's getting paid good money and all that kind of stuff. But he's a great actor for those movies. I often thought about, you know, could we ever take over that plane, this plane we're sitting in, you know, and I, I don't think it can be done. I, I, um, anything can be done, but you'd have to have inside guys, guy would have to be a marshal, maybe shoot the other marshals and stuff. Because those marshals, they're called air marshals, they're U.S. air marshals. They don't play, man. And if any of you should feel the need to scream, spit, or bite, you'll get the treatment. Fuck you, pig. Gag and bag this Nazi muffin. See, this kind of thing puts me in a foul mood. These rules will be enforced. I guess they don't have to worry about laws or this and shit. They don't fucking play. They will beat your ass and knock you down. Because I guess the safety of that flight is paramount. And if you fuck that up, everybody's dead. But you know, I, I'll tell you what really made me made me uh, cringe in the in this Con Air movie. You know, when the plane had some, uh, first of all, it was shot, it was going down, all that kind of stuff at the end, because they had helicopters. When they get up off the airfield, they get away again. I don't figure that out. Like, you wouldn't have had jets over there, would have took that plane out before it even come close to getting in the air. But anyway, this, this, you know, I was on Con Air when, man, you'd think that plane's going down. I'm not kidding. Not only drop out of sky, I've been on there. I saw smoke come out of an engine. I've been on there when they had to have an emergency landing. I was on Con Air so many times. I'm telling you, man, it's freaky shit. Now, you'd think to yourself, oh, they're not going to let this plane go. You know, why would they, you know, kill the marshals on the plane? And, and I, a part of me believes that. But a part of me also knows it's the federal government. And they're going to say, well, we got to get them there, man. And don't worry about that maintenance today. I don't give a shit. Whatever. I don't know the whole truth of the matter, but I can tell you this. It's kind of scary to me. Uh, it really is. Uh, and I don't want to go on that plane again. It kind of like it makes Spirit Airlines or what is it, Frontier Airlines, look like a real great airline. Some of these little, little airlines scare the shit out of you because you don't know if they're fudging stuff to save money or whatever, you know, thinking, ah, we don't really don't need to check that bolt that's been checked or whatever, you're supposed to change it so much, and they know it's all bullshit to a degree until something really goes long, wrong. I don't know. So the parts in this movie, Con Air, which I do recommend, I do recommend the movie, uh, and I only recommend the movie because I want you to look at it from a different point of view. I don't want you to look at Con Air the way I look at it. I want you to look at, con and, and I do love that they had all these kind of different uh, inmates so close together on, on a plane. That's not happening either. Uh, they would have been totally in black boxes, double chained, you know, you're not getting out, you know. It, it's a lot harder to do things when you have that kind of stuff on you. And they, and they know it. They know it. Uh, and yeah, I didn't see any of that. I, I, it was too easy for them to manipulate, so to speak, you know, like that. But once they even got and took over the plane, that was like, okay, you don't think somebody knew about that already? That pilot didn't radio, people didn't radio, they don't have communications, they don't hear from somebody like they didn't do. Come on, you know, open the door, come on out. That, that doesn't happen, man. It just doesn't happen. It's not going to happen. Period. It will not happen. So I did enjoy the movie for what it is. I love the acting with Nicolas Cage and all the guys. Uh, I really did. Uh, and they played great parts. You know, I mean, I often wonder if I was an actor, what part would I play? You know, obviously, I guess I'd be playing a comic. And I think I could do something like that. I really do. And I'd probably make a good convict on a plane. but uh, or, or not on a plane, whatever it is. Anyway, 
I give thumbs up to a Con Air. I wouldn't give it four stars, but I'd give it a good, good stars because it's just so unrealistic, up and down, getting away and stuff like that. That's kind of unrealistic for me. Uh, great acting, I give it that. Uh, it's not a deep plot. It's not a deep anything like that. It's pretty a basic one. A guy getting out, these guys trying to escape and then have this plan and he foils it and he's the guy on the inside then. Uh, although they had a guy on the inside, but he's the real guy on the inside, if you want to call it that. So, I thought it was called Cameron Poe. We played by uh, Nicolas Cage. Anyway, guys, enjoy the movie. Please check it out. Con Air. Have a great day, everybody. Stay safe. Make good choices. Don't be on the real Con Air. I don't want you there. I really don't. Have a good day, everybody. Stay safe.